Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's House today. A special welcome to all the guests who are with us. It's our joy and privilege to have you here as we share the good news of God and His word of forgiveness with you. Let's take a couple of moments and we'll greet our fellow worshipers around us in the name of our Lord and Savior. If you are a guest with us today, we appreciate that we have a record of your visit, so we ask that our guests please fill out one of those connect cards that's located in the pew in front of you, those pencils. You can hand it to an usher or place it in the offering boxes too as you leave worship today. Well, this weekend, we celebrate All Saints Day. It happened that back on November 1st this weekend. We celebrate it where we remember all those whom the Lord has taken home to heaven from this congregation the past year, also in our personal life as well. But also the encouragement, the encouragement it gives to us as we know that heaven is ours through faith in Jesus. So please join me to sing our opening hymn, 848. Please rise. This morning we follow the order of service, the service setting one. That's found on page 154 in your hymnals. And please take note that for the confession and absolution, we will use the second red box, and that's located on the top of page 155. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus.
God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together into one holy church, the body of Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow the example of your blessed saints in lives of faith and willing service, and with them at last inherit the inexpressible joy that you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This time our kindergarten class will sing their song soon and very soon.
Our first lesson today comes to us from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Here's the Apostle John, who's about to close out this final revelation he sees. All the battles have been won. Christ has come. He looks up and he sees that new Jerusalem, a heavenly city, a place where all believers long to be, where they will be with their King, their Lord and Savior for all eternity. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea no longer existed. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And from the throne I heard a loud voice that said, Look, God's dwelling is with people. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain, because the former things have passed away. The one who was seated on the throne said to me, Look, I am making everything new. He also said, Write, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To anyone who is thirsty, I will give freely from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. We continue with our psalm, Psalm 150b, that's found printed for you in your worship folder on page 3. Our second lesson from Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is that great faith chapter of the Bible. The writer has gone through those myriad of wonderful examples, Noah, Moses, David, 
And now he gets to that point where can't name all of them, but all those people have gone through the trials and troubles of this life. It's only because they have that faith that points them to their heavenly home they're able to go through it. And what more should I say? There would not be enough time for me to continue to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. By faith, they conquered kingdoms, carried out justice, obtained things that were promised, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edges of the sword, were made powerful after being weak, became mighty in battle, and caused foreign armies to flee. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others who were tortured did not accept their release so that they may take part in a better resurrection. Still others experienced mocking and lashes, in addition to chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were tempted, they were killed with the sword, they went around in sheepskins and goatskins, needy, afflicted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them as they wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. All of these were commended in Scripture by faith. Yet they did not receive what was promised because God had planned something better for us, namely that they would not reach the goal apart from us. The Word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel and also the basis for the sermon today comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 6. Jesus lifted up his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, because yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, because you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Blessed are you whenever people hate you, and whenever they exclude and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because of this. Your reward is great in heaven. The fact is, their fathers constantly did the same things to the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, 889. Jerusalem the Golden.
Grace, peace, and mercy are yours in abundance. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my dear fellow saints, amen. The coach claps their hands, welcoming the team back to the bench. They enthusiastically greet each member with a high five. At the end of the game, whether they win or whether they lose, the coach speaks words of encouragement to each person as an individual, but then also to the team as a whole. The coach knows that their players need to hear those words of encouragement. They don't want to focus on a single loss or a single mistake, but they want the team to keep their eyes on the prize, constant improved rhythm, and maybe get into that big game later on down the road. This type of communication, these words of encouragement are so needed. It's better than a coach yelling and berating the players for each and every mistake that they make. If that happens, the confidence, well, it will go down the tubes, the team will give up, and their season will be a complete loss. We need to hear words of encouragement in our life. And that way, when certain situations and circumstances arise, as we go through those trials, those troubles, those tribulations, those persecutions, whatever it might be in our life, we know where to go to find our strength to overcome. A crowd gathered around Jesus. That was nothing new. Everywhere he went, people came from all over. They wanted to listen to Jesus preach and teach. They had not heard someone preach and teach with such authority as Jesus had. The Pharisees, they kind of kept the people under the finger of the law with fear and works. In Jesus, they heard a message of freedom and joy and forgiveness found only in the gospel message. And then the sick and the suffering, those possessed by evil spirits, they also came to Jesus. They sought out a cure for their ailments. As he often did, Jesus took time out to heal them. Oftentimes, the most lowly in society, Jesus would speak with them with words of kindness and compassion and healing. Many times, people just had to touch Jesus' cloak as he walked by, and they would be healed instantaneously of their ailment. Jesus looked out at the crowd on this day. His heart went out to them. He was filled with compassion. But as he looked at the people in that crowd, he also knew what they were going through. He knew their troubles. He looked in their hearts and he saw their fears and worries. And so Jesus spoke words of encouragement to this crowd. Blessed are you who hunger now. Blessed are you who weep now. Blessed are you whenever people hate you and whenever they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. As Jesus spoke of those blessings, how do you think the people reacted? Many probably were wondering if Jesus simply misspoke. The 12 newly minted apostles could have came running up to Jesus and said, Lord, Lord, don't speak of those blessings. In fact, they're not really blessings, but they're woes and they're curses and they're troubles. The people, they don't want to hear it. They're going to turn their back and walk away from you and find someone else. But Jesus did not misspeak. Jesus intimately knew each and every one of those people in the crowd. And he knew exactly what they needed to hear. He knew their trials, their troubles, their tribulations. 
He knew how maybe some people had turned their back on some of those in the crowd. And so Jesus spoke exactly what they needed to hear. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the hungry. Blessed are the sorrowful. Blessed are those who are hated, who are excluded, who are insulted, who are persecuted. Jesus wanted to raise these people up as blessed in their life so they could overcome those tribulations. As we take a look at the list of blessings, how do we react? Do we think Jesus maybe misspoke as well? Do we wonder how could anyone feel blessed as they're poor, as they're hungry, as they're sorrowful, as they're insulted, as they're hated, as they're persecuted? We don't want to go through those things. But yet in life, we know we go exactly through those circumstances. We weep. We know that our sins have turned us away from God. God lays out his Ten Commandments for us to follow, and one by one we go down the list and we see how we have broken each and every single one on a daily basis. Our consciences sink with shame and guilt. And so we feel that sorrow over the many times that we have disappointed God. And then that sorrow also comes into our life as we see the death of a family member or friend, which leaves that big hole in our heart. So yeah, we certainly are sorrowful. Hated and excluded by the world because of the Son of Man, oh, we face that on a daily basis as well. As we take our stand on God's word and faithfully proclaim the truth of God's word, we will be hated and insulted. We promote God's design for marriage, one man and one woman united together for a lifetime, but the world says that we are narrow-minded and full of hate. We profess that there's only one way to get to heaven, and that's through faith in Jesus. But the world says, no, there's many ways to get there. And if heaven and religion are not your thing, that's okay, because as long as you are happy, that's all that matters. And so the world hates us and insults us and excludes us because of what we believe and confess and teach. And it really should come as no surprise. Jesus said that's how the people treated the prophets of old. God sent prophet after prophet to his chosen nation, Israel, to call them back to re repentance. But then those people of Israel often rejected the message of those prophets, put them in prison, tortured them, even killed some. And so we go through those very same things for what we profess and teach and confess as well. So how could Jesus ever say, blessed are the poor, the hungry, the sorrowful, those who are insulted, excluded, hated because of the name of the Son of Man? It's because he speaks those words of encouragement to us as we go through those things in this world, knowing that we are not alone, but that our Lord and Savior is with us, and he is going to lift us up to overcome each and every one of those terrible circumstances in our life. It's because... We walk not with our eyes just here, but we walk with our eyes heavenward. The people gathered around Jesus. It would have been so easy for them to focus just on the negative and hear those things, but Jesus spoke the positive. Blessed are you who hunger now, because you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Blessed are you whenever people hate you and whenever they exclude and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because of this. Your reward is great in heaven. These people are truly blessed. Blessed are the poor, for they will inherit the riches of the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who hunger, for they will truly be satisfied. 
Blessed are those who weep those tears of sorrow here on this earth because they will have those tears of joy and happiness in heaven. Blessed are those who are insulted, excluded, hated, and persecuted because great is their reward in heaven. Jesus wanted his followers not to focus just on their life right now, but he wanted them to look to the glories of heaven. This world full of sin, it will have its grasp on so many people, but we cannot become distracted. Heaven is our true home. And so that's exactly how we continue to walk as well. Right now we walk as part of the church militant. We live in this world and we do battle daily with sin, with the sinful world, our sinful flesh, and the devil. We also know that God sent his one and only son, Jesus, into this world who lived that perfect life for us, who went to the cross and there he shed his blood and three days later he rose again on Easter morning, defeating sin, death, and the devil on our behalf. And so we know that we too will overcome. Blessed are those who hold on to that faith because heaven is theirs. In a few moments, we are going to read the names of all those who have died from November 1st of last year to October 31st of this year. And for some, maybe we will cry because it's a family member or dear friend. For others, maybe it's that person that would always sit in the pew next to us in our worship service. And maybe a lump will come to our throat because we think of someone else, another Christian brother and sister who has gone home to heaven or maybe who will soon go home to heaven. But I also hope that we can rejoice as those names are read. Rejoice for those people truly are blessed. They have joined the ranks of the church triumphant. They have gone to heaven, leaving behind this world of sadness, of pain, of disease, and sin, and death, and now they are in a place where there is eternal joy and happiness. That also provides encouragement for us as we walk in this life, knowing that we are only strangers. We are only foreigners living here in this world, but heaven, there is our real home. There is a place where we look forward to to join together with all the saints triumphant, surrounding the throne of Christ, singing his praises forever. And so we listen to these words of encouragement from Jesus, these words of how truly blessed we are. Blessed right now as we go through all the troubles of this world because we know that Christ has overcome, and so we also have overcome. Blessed as we walk with our eyes heavenward, knowing there is our eternal home. So take heart. Jesus speaks these words of encouragement to his followers. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we join in confessing our faith. And for that, we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed that's found on page 163 in your hymnals. The Apostles' Creed on page 163, and we confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue on page four in our worship folders. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. With hope in Christ and in the resurrection to eternal life, we remember those in this congregation who have died in the last year. And just last week, our Lord called home to himself in heaven, Mary Ellen Bushke. Then also yesterday, our Lord called home Dolores Winter. Her funeral arrangements are pending. David Rupno, David Wade, Anira Themi, Lawrence Sackett, Betty McFarlane, Donald Gentz, Darwin Tesh, Norman Jenkins, Marjorie Raditz, Margaret Lake, Charlotte Neitzel, Arthur Camrath, Betty Woodall, Ernest Larson, Violet Schmidt, Roman Brian Weisensell, Sharon Mallon, Rick Schumacher, Beverly Reedy, Beverly Spear, Gordon Roberts, Barbara Frankenstein, Angeline Rigi, Joan Breitzman, Franklin Keekafer, Sally Steffen, Irvin Koenig, Shirley Dinch, Bristol Brush, Ruth Worth, Mark Paul, Mary Ellen Bushke, and Dolores Winter. We remember in silence those who have died in previous years and those who are members of other Christian congregations. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you told Mary and Martha that you are the resurrection and the life. You promised your disciples that you would prepare a place for them. You promised the repentant thief that he would be with you in paradise. And through the disciple John, you revealed to us that you will wipe away every tear from our eyes in the day when there is no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. Fill our hearts with these firm and certain promises. Comfort us with the assurance that those who have died in faith now see you face to face. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, surrounded by a great multitude that no one can count, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, 892, verses 1, 4, and 3, by all your saints still striving.
Please rise for our prayers. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, you may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our final hymn, 842, Jesus Still Lead On. Once again, good morning to everyone. Glad to be with you today. Uh, just a couple of announcements to draw your attention to. We are going to have coffee fellowship today, so feel free to come downstairs to the basement. There'll be some refreshments down there and some time of fellowship. Then also during the Bible class hour, I'll be giving a presentation on the Greece trip I went on in last June, so you're more than welcome to come down for that. And then if donuts weren't enough for you today, the 8th grade class is also doing a pancake breakfast that's going to be from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. It's going to be held at Good Shepherd Church. So they're going to be doing another meal here later on. But this pancake breakfast will be at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church right up there on Center, Center Street by Quick Trip and Dairy Queen. So feel free to go there for after 
stuff your face with donuts and maybe even for a lunch after that. Also, please take note that next Sunday, following our 10 a.m. service, we are going to have a call meeting, and this is going to be putting out a call for a second grade teacher for Ms. Geiger, who has announced her retirement at the end of this school year. So next week, we will have a call meeting about 11, 15 a.m. or so downstairs in the church basement. Hope many of you can show up for that. And then finally, there are some keys that were in the parking lot. Looks like it's a Subaru. It's got a Piggly Wiggly card on it. I believe it was this parking lot they were found on right out here. So I have the keys. If no one claims them, I'm saying it's a gift for the pastor today, <laughs> for the preacher today, okay? So it's a Subaru, just a single key with a Piggly Wiggly card. If anybody's missing keys, probably not going to get too far. I have them for you. With that, wish you God's richest blessings upon your day. May keep you safe until we meet again.